Greetings, grace and peace, movement, family and friends to all of our constituents in Movement Houston and Movement Nashville, Movement DC. Grace and peace to you all. We pray that you all have had a blessed and prosperous week. We pray that God has been good to you or at least you recognize how good God has been to you. Listen, family and friends, we're continuing our discussion, our conversation, our teaching on kingdom and the kingdom and kingdom culture. Uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, we have defined kingdom as a very present spiritual reality that will ultimately be fulfilled in a future physical form. We've been walking through Mark chapter four over the last few weeks. We've discussed what it looks like for us to be sowers. We've discussed what it looks like for us to sow the seed, which is the gospel, the word of God. We've also discussed family and friends, how we are to identify our audience, those in whom the soil or the seed should be sown into, which is the soil. Um, we've talked about spirit and we have also family and friends uh, talked about um, being committed to the season. Uh, this week, uh, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, we continue our discussion. We continue our teaching. And so we want to welcome you to this week's webisode. Um, listen, my name is Dre Bergs, and every week as you log into these weekly webisodes, you'll find that uh, we literally discuss and talk about how great our God is. We discuss and we talk about how great he loved us so much so that he gave his son Jesus to live the life that you and I couldn't live. He conquered death, the enemy that you and I couldn't conquer, and he freely gives us salvation by grace alone, uh, through faith alone, in him the glory of God alone. If you all would turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter number four, Mark chapter number four, again, in your Bibles to Mark chapter number four. Um, as you are turning there, as you are turning there, we'll continue to this uh, paint the picture here, hoping and praying that you all realize how much of a vehicle the, the body of Christ is for God's glory. Uh, everywhere that Christ has been made known, uh, literally, ladies and gentlemen, the church, people drawn together into the mission of Jesus Christ through the enablement and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, people have served as the outposts covenant commitment as the body of Christ is God's singular plan, ladies and gentlemen, for his people. It is the singular plan for kingdom expansion. People, ladies and gentlemen, are a great resource. And so as we continue to discuss, as we continue to talk about, as we continue to literally lay out the plan for the kingdom to be expanded. Uh, it's important that you and I, you and I realize that this is a Holy Spirit driven process. No man-made model wisdom will ever sur supersede uh, or replace the Lord's activity or timing in the expansion of whose kingdom? His kingdom. So it's not about um, fancy models and or uh, uh, manuals, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that will ultimately expand his kingdom, but it is the Lord's activity and the Lord's timing uh, in the expansion of his kingdom. Mark chapter number four, ladies and gentlemen, Mark chapter number four. If you are there, please turn in your Bibles. The Bible says, and I quote, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground, Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows. Though he does not know how, all by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then uh, the full grain in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it for the harvest has come. Mark chapter number four, verses 26 through 29, the grass withers, flowers fade, but the word of our Lord stands forever. Um, it has been our hopes that you would understand through this teaching and through these teachings that you would discover um, what is needed to expand the kingdom. It's our hopes that you would understand 
And as we looked through the text together, as we walked through the text together, that you would find and pick out these six or several essentials that would ultimately stand out for you to consistently consider and consider what is needed to expand the kingdom. Again, as we give real quick brief synopsis or real quick um, uh, uh, review, sowers are needed, men and women willing to cast the seed. Not only are men and women needed to cast the seed, but the seed itself, the word of God cast from the hand of the sower is needed. Not only is the seed, the word of God cast from the hand of the sower needed, but soil is needed. The hearts of the lost in which the seed is cast is needed. So as we look at that, it's important that you all realize that um, the spirit is ultimately what is going to give increase. It is not based on our own uh, 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 efforts, but it is based on the efforts of the spirit. Now, God's sovereignty, human responsibility. So we are responsible as sowers, men and women, to cast the seed. But as the text says, I, Paul, sowed the seed. Apollos watered it. But God is the one who makes it grow. First Corinthians chapter number three, verse number six. So endeavoring to start new works, new ministries, endeavoring to, to, to expand the kingdom without the Holy Spirit's guidance is like planning a trip, ladies and gentlemen, to the moon without a rocket. You'll never be able to achieve it. You will never be able to accomplish it. And so as we've discussed, it is important that we also are committed to the harvest. No seed grows overnight. So men and women are needed to be committed. No farmer sows one day and expects to reap the harvest the next. So there must be a commitment to the harvest. And so today, as we continue on in our teachings, this week we will discuss essential element number six, and that is the sickle laborers in the harvest force, laborers in the harvest force. Again, we have looked at Luke chapter 10, verse number two. We've looked at uh, uh, Mark chapter number four, verses 26 through 29. We realize that it takes only one to sow. It takes only one to sow, though we have encouraged all of you to, to sow. But it's important that you realize that it only takes one to sow. However, however, the harvest brings the whole community together. Now, we're not saying we're not suggesting I'm not inferring that um, you should just let uh, certain individuals of the community be sowers. I'm encouraging all of you to be sowers. But you also need to realize that it only takes one to sow. However, the harvest brings in the whole community. While one can scatter seed effectively, the nature of the harvest, listen, the nature of the harvest demands a quick response beyond the abilities of any one harvester. So, so, so it may take one individual to cast seed into the hearts of those who are lost. Some plant some water God gives increase. And so as God and the spirit of God begins to give increase, that literally uh, requests or requires there to be a whole community that is willing to harvest the seed. So, 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 so it can only take one to effectively uh, scatter seed, but it takes and demands a quick response beyond the abilities of any one person, of any one harvester, of any one sower. It requires community efforts. Some plant, some water, God gives increase. And the text also says in Luke 10 too, that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers, the, the harvesters are few. So, so, so it takes one to plant, but, but by nature of uh, 
uh, of, 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 of seed time harvest. At, by, by nature of it, it requires more individuals to harvest than it does to actually sow. So for this reason, family, for, for this reason, friends, for, for this reason, uh, neighbors, for this reason, Movement Houston, for, for this reason, Movement Nashville, Movement Dallas, Movement D.C., to those who are part of this movement, this, 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 this uh, missional movement, this uh, ecology for spiritual formation in the digital age, this, this, this micro uh, or this missional movement that is comprised of micro expressions of the church, um, i.e. movement meetups. It requires um, friends. It requires family. It requires neighbors to be mobilized into the harvest to, to reap the harvest together. And, and so, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it, it's important that you realize that this cannot and should not be done alone, alone. For this reason, family and friends, neighbors are mobilized. We are mobilized. We should be mobilized into the harvest to reap it together. The, the reason is obvious. Timing is everything. Too early, the text says, and the grain will not be ripe. It, it would lack essential nutrients. Uh, too late, and the harvest spoils in the field. So, so an entire season of resources and labor could be and will be lost if we are not very careful, if we are not in tune, if we are not, watch this, committed to the harvest. The text again says uh, that the planter or the the farmer um, as we have read over the last few weeks it says all by itself the soil produces grain first the stalk then the head then the full grain in the head as soon as the grain is ripe he puts the sickle to it for the harvest has come now in order for him to know when the harvest has come uh, it requires commitment and consistent regular checkup on that which has been planted on, on, on the harvest. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as you just think through that, um, as you think through that, as you process that, uh, we need to be very cautious and we need to be very careful um, that we do not allow seasons of resources and labor to be lost because we are not committed to, to <coughs> excuse me, the harvest. We must be committed to the harvest. Too late again, the harvest spoils in the field. And we don't want, I don't want entire seasons and resources to be lost because we are laborer lazy. We, 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 we are laborer lazy. We don't want to check on the field. We just expect God to just give increase. And as God gives increase, he will harvest that which he has increased. No, the text says the harvest is plentiful, Luke 10 to, but the laborers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send laborers into the harvest field. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send laborers into the field. We are asking, we have been asking the Lord of the harvest. We have been beseeching the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Why? Because the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Sowers were not enough. Those that Jesus sent were given instruction concerning the ongoing task. Sowers are not enough. Sowers are not enough. And so Jesus compelled those that were given the instruction. They were compelled to immediately pray for the laborers needed to reap the harvest that they were sowing. So, so we are constantly and consistently, we invite you every day at 10.02 a.m. or 10.02 p.m. to pray Luke 10.2. And this is something that we have been asking the partners and the 
faithful movers and shakers of the movement to do consistently, corporately and collectively to pray. Luke 10 to why? Because sowers are not enough. We've asked every one of you to be a sword. That's men and women willing to cast the seed, which is the gospel, the word of God. But sowers, ladies and gentlemen, are not enough, will never be enough. Jesus gives very specific instructions concerning the ongoing task, the ongoing work of harvesting. He says they were compelled to immediately pray. That's what the text says. They were compelled to immediately pray. You got to understand the context here. They were compelled to immediately pray for the laborers that were needed to reap what they were sowing. They were praying for laborers to reap where they were sowing. And so they prayed for gatherers who would be able to ensure the harvest was brought together in a timely and an orderly way. And, and some want to be harvesters, but you want to bring people together in an, uh, a, a way that is not God honoring or in a way that does not line up with the methodology of the movement. And so it's important that, that you understand that they prayed for gatherers who would be able to ensure that the harvest was brought together and the harvest wouldn't spoil. Some of you, you bring people together, but you bring them together and you watch the harvest spoil. And so it's about timing and it's about the harvest being brought together in an orderly fashion in an orderly way. Likewise, we must be ready to respond, ladies and gentlemen, when the harvest comes. How many of you listening to this weekly webisode are literally ready if the harvest was to come this week or next week or next month? Are you ready? We must be ready to respond when the harvest comes. It is teachings and webisodes like this. It is series like this that many of you don't necessarily like, but they are necessary to remind you that you must be ready. I believe it was T.D. Jakes that says, get ready, get ready, get ready. Listen, we must be ready for when the harvest comes. And so I want you all to consider a few questions over the next few moments. I want you to consider a few questions concerning concerning the sickle slash the harvest. I want you to consider some questions. What resources? This is the first question that I want you to consider. What resources exist to help me bring in the harvest? Have I have I have I have I identified some resources that can help me bring in uh, bring in the harvest in 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 the text? Um, we've identified one resource and that resource is the sickle. The, the sickle was a resource that existed for the farmer, for the sower to, to bring in the harvest. And so I'm asking you, what is your what is your what is your sickle? What, what is the tool that you need to use in this dispensation, in this day and age, uh, in your neighborhood, in your community to bring in the harvest? I want you to consider that. I want you to think through what resources exist. What resource do I need so that I can effectively and efficiently bring in the harvest without the harvest spoiling? Because I don't want the harvest to spoil uh, on, on my watch. I don't want the harvest to spoil uh, when, when I've been assigned as a harvester. So, so, so again, remember, remember, Jesus gave some very specific instructions concerning the ongoing task. He says, pray for the laborers needed to reap. And so I'm asking you, because we've been consistently and, and, and fervently praying, but I'm asking you, what resources do you need to help you bring in the harvest? Do you need a, a, a church app? Do, do you need um, movement meetups? Do you need safe spaces and places where you can gather the harvest so that they can, 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 can be and live in Christian community? What resources do you need? What resources are needed so that you can bring in 
the harvest. Qu question number two, question number two, the second question that I want you to, to wrestle with, that I want you to ponder uh, this week is how many are ready to swing the sickle within your network? How, how many are, are willing, how many in your household are willing to, to swing the sickle? How, how many are willing to swing the sickle? I'm asking the question uh, corporately and collectively, are you willing to swing the sickle? Are you willing to use the resources that you've been giving within this network Movement Church Network, the movement, have you or are you willing, are you ready to swing the sickle to use the resources that you have been given within this ministry, within this church network for the sake of seeing the harvest come in? Or do you just say or do you have the heart posture of I don't want to do anything? I'm not going to participate. I don't want to be a sower, nor do I want to be a harvester. So, so, so I need for you all to think through that question, not a hard question, not, 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 not a difficult question to, to, to deal with or to wrestle with, but one that you must consider this week. Am I ready to use the resources that this church network has given me for the sake of seeing the harvest come in? Am I willing to use the church app? Am I willing to use the website? Am I willing to use uh, uh, um, uh, these, the, these webisodes? Am I willing to use the teachings and the instruction, the discipleship training? Am I willing to get connected to a meetup? And am I willing to connect others to a meetup? Or have I just gotten lackadaisical and lazy and I'm not really interested in the harvest? I'm just interested in me and what's in this for me. The third question that I want you all to ask and I want you to think about is how does my work as a harvester differ from that of a sower? This is this is again, that doesn't mean that you cannot be a sower, but 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 there are some things that the farmer does when sowing that he doesn't necessarily do when harvesting. So 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 I'm asking you, how does the work differ? How does it differ? I'm asking you to think through how the work differs and I want you to discuss how the work differs in community, in your homes, in movement meetups. I, I want you to discuss these questions because these questions are essential. These questions are necessary. The, these questions are accountability questions because you've got to realize, you must understand that, 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 that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers, they are few. And this is the reason why we are beseeching the Lord of the harvest to send out more laborers into the harvest. But but when you're sent out into the harvest, the question is, do you know how your work differs than that of the sower? And then my 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 fourth and final question for for this particular webisode that I want you all to wrestle with is simply this. Is my sickle sharp? Is my sickle sharp? Because there's one thing to swing a sickle uh, in order to, to chop down the harvest. But, but if the sickle isn't sharp, it ultimately damages the harvest. It, it, it damages the harvest. And, 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 and it could cause uh, you to have to do more work than necessary. Um, so, so the question that I want you to ask and that I want you to consider uh, that fourth question is, is my sickle sharp? Is my sickle sharp? Or am I sharp enough to even use my sickle? Because in this day and age, you've been given the tools and the resources, and the resources are aplenty. Um, there are a plethora of resources um, that are in your hand um, constantly throughout the day. 
Um, but the question is, am I sharp enough to use uh, my sickle or this particular resource for the sake of sharing the gospel or seeing the harvest come in? And so I need you all, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, Movement Houston, Movement D.C., Movement Dallas, Movement Nashville. I'm needing for you all to remember Jesus's words in John chapter number four. Um, and the words are this. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now he harvests to crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. That's John chapter number four, verse number 36. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now he harvests to crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. The, the, ter, the, the ter, terrific truth here of these essential elements that we've been discussing, uh, the, ter, the ter, terrific truth of these six essential elements from Mark chapter number four is that all have been provided to us in advance. As we, as, as we look at Mark chapter number four, all have been provided to us in advance. When you think about sores, that's men and women. Uh, when you think about the word of God, the, 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 the seed, when you think about the soil, um, people, um, all of these things have been provided to us, these essential elements. They've been provided to us in advance. The spirit provided to us in advance. Uh, the season is provided to us in advance. The question is, are you committed to the season? But the season has been provided to us in advance. The sickle laborers in uh, in the harvest force provided to us in advance. Are they going to show up and do what needs to be done? But 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 these resources, these essentials from Mark chapter number four, they've been provided to us in advance. And so as we continue to navigate through this, this teaching on kingdom culture, um, our study of Mark chapter number four and uh, the kingdom expansion process, um, it, it, it is essential that, that we first understand these six essentials, that we embrace these six essentials, um, and that as we continue to study um, what it means to expand the kingdom and what it means for us to grow the kingdom uh, and church planting, uh, the process, it's important that we pray through these elements, to pray through these elements to ensure that all of the resources that um, have been provided to us in advance um, are available to us um, so that we can utilize them for the sake of the harvest. Uh, we got to make sure that all of these resources are being utilized. Um, are all of the resources or the sources of source being utilized? Is the is the is the soil um, being utilized? Um, is, is 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 the seed being utilized? Source, seed, soil. Are these being utilized for the sake of the harvest? Because there's nothing like having sores that's not being utilized. There's nothing like having the seed, the gospel, the word of God not being utilized. There's nothing like knowing that there is plenty of people, soil around us if we would just be intentional to be seed sores. Like, like we got to utilize the soil if we want to see a harvest come. So, so it's important that we utilize these resources for the glory of God. For the glory of God. And so over, over the years, we've, we've taught these principles. Over the years, we've highlighted these particular principles. Over the years of training concerning the kingdom of God, some of you may have even asked the question, uh, and some have even questioned Jesus' view of, of, of the church in this parable. 
And um, I think that there can be a thorough defense of the nature of the kingdom and its relationship or its relation to the church. Um, I, I don't think if when I when I look at this parable, I, I, I can clearly see the relationship. Let me say it that way. I can clearly see the relationship between kingdom, kingdom expansion, kingdom growth and the church. And I don't believe it would be possible um, without parables like this, us being able to clearly see it without parables um, and stories like like this found in Mark chapter number four. Um, and so when we when we think through when we think through this entire process, the kingdom of God, the very present spiritual reality that will ultimately be fulfilled in the future physical form, um, and the church, I believe, are inseparable. Wherever the kingdom of God has spread, the church, again, ladies and gentlemen, has served as the outposts. The people of God, the people that have been drawn together into his mission have served as the outposts, providing follow up and providing the body of life to newly assembled um, people or resources of of the harvest. And so Jesus uses the parable in Mark chapter number four, verses 26 through 29 to give us a living picture a living picture of what it looks like for the kingdom of God to expand, a living picture of a planting process, a church planting process. And so the illustration borrowed from farming ensures, it ensures its meaning can easily be translated and understood across cultures and across time. So I believe that it is because of passages like Mark chapter number four, verses 26 through 29. I believe that when you really look at that, you can understand and clearly understand what Jesus was trying to accomplish. He locked the truth and the truths of the kingdom into a form that all people in all ages and in all times can ultimately grasp. And he says, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows. Though he doesn't know how, all by itself, the soil produces grain first, the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, the text says he puts the sickle. He puts resources to it for the harvest has come. The harvest, ladies and gentlemen, has come. So when we recognize these essential elements for kingdom expansion, for church planting, when we recognize and by recognizing these essential elements for kingdom expansion and church planting, it simply is a beginning. This is just simply the beginning. And this can be uh, uh, these truths, these principles can 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 look be looked at as elementary and fundamental. But putting them into practice demands, ladies and gentlemen, commitment and discernment and proper timing. And so I'm just asking of you all, the viewers of this weekly webisode, the partners of Movement Houston, Movement Nashville, Movement DC, Movement Dallas, to any mover and shaker who has decided to move. Why? Because movement is life. I'm asking any of you and all of you to be committed to the harvest. It demands commitment and discernment and proper timing. The proper organization of each element is essential. And so as we have organized sores, as we have organized and, and literally given you uh, proper instructions on inductive Bible study methods so that you can sow the seed into the soil 
and expect the spirit to do what the spirit does. We're just asking for you to be committed to the season and then swing the sickle when the time comes. Sowing, sowing, excuse me, never proceeds entering into the field. Harvest never comes before sowing. I'll say that again. Harvest never comes before sowing and sowing never proceeds entering into the field. So I'm asking you all this week to enter into the field, the fields of life, the fields of Houston, the fields of Dallas, the fields of Nashville, the fields of D.C. I'm asking every mover and shaker to begin moving. Why? Because movement is life. Enter into the field and begin sowing the seed. And remember, it always, it always requires commitment. And so the question is, are you committed to the six essential elements? Because these essentials must be understood and they cannot be, uh, they must be understood first before they can be committed to. And so I'm asking you all to understand the essential elements. And then once you understand them, then we can employ them. And so, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, as you consider the teachings of Mark chapter four, again, Mark four shows us four fields leading to the harvest, understanding that these four fields provide us with signposts for progress, for progression. And so every movement meetup we can consider that a field. We consider that a field. When we enter into a skating ring, that's a field. When we enter into a coffee house, that is a field. That is called an entry strategy. And so as a movement meetup host, you are, watch this, a sower. The question is, have you been committed to sowing the seed into the soil? So if you are just entering into the field just for the sake of entering into the field, just to be in that field and you're not sowing, you'll never see a harvest come. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just asking, I'm just asking, I'm just asking for you to be committed to these six essentials. We will continue our teaching. We will continue discovering what it is um, that God would have for us to do over the next few weeks as we continue to just navigate through uh, the four fields of kingdom expansion and kingdom growth. Go in peace. Have a blessed and prosperous week.